We continue now at the top of Daf Lamed Aleph from the Beis Mesech Eskitin. This is Gitin Daf 31b. And the previous summer, the Mishnah said, let's say a person has some produce that's designated, that he's going to make that the trumer, the meiser, on other produce that he's going to eat somewhere else. And then he discovers that that produce is not there. So how far back does he have to go and be concerned that the produce was not there, that maybe the trumer was not chal? And so the first opinion was Rabbi Yochan, and he was lenient. And he says, when the Mishnah says, me ace le ace, it means you just have to go back 24 hours from the time that you discovered the produce was missing. You have to say 24 hours before that, uh, until 24 hours before that time, it might have gone missing. But earlier than that, you don't have to be concerned. And now the Gemara brings the stricter opinion, the opinion of Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yanai, in terms of what the Mishnah means. May ace le ace shalha nacha. You have to be concerned 24 hours from the time that you actually put it down, meaning the time that you placed, you designated that fruit for 24 hours, from the time you placed it, you can assume that it was there. But after that first 24 hours, and from then forward, you have to assume that maybe it was missing, a much stricter opinion. Rashi says, He's got to be concerned going back all of the days that it was gone, until 24 hours after he put it down, that first time that he put it down, meaning, that first day you can assume it was there, but from then on you have a real doubt and you're going to have to take off Truma again. And the Gemara now tries to bring a proof from our Mishnah. Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah, Im ovdu, if they are lost, Hareza Choshesh he has to be concerned 24 hours. That language works well according to the lenient opinion. 24 hours from the time you checked and you found it was missing, that works well. But if you're saying you can only be confident it was there the first 24 hours it was placed there, Hai the phrasing should not be Meyes Ad meyes leis mi boile. It should be until meyes leis, meaning until going all the way back until that first 24 hours, you have a concern. And the Gemara says, indeed, Kasha, that is difficult. The language of the Mishnah does not support that strict opinion. And the Gemara continues, Divre Rebbe Lazar, again, in the beginning of the Mishnah said, this is the opinion of Rebbe Lazar. Amar Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Lazar says, Chaluk and all of Chaverov al Rebbe Lazar. The, the colleagues of Rebbe Lazar disagreed with Rebbe Lazar. And where do we see that? It's not, as we learned in the following Mishnah. Mikvah shenimdat, if you have a mikvah that was measured, v'nimtza chaser, and it turns out that the mikvah is missing water, it's not kosher, kol taharos shenasu al gabov lemafreya bein bershos hayochid, bein bershos harabim tomeos. Anything that was made pure through that mikvah going back, whether in bershos hayochid, whether in bershos harabim, it is all going to be tomei. You have to assume that that mikvah was always missing the proper shear, it was always a problem. And in our Mishnah, Rebbe Lazar said something about meyes leis. In other words, you have a chazaka, 24 hours, Hours, there is some amount of time where you don't have to be concerned. And the Gemara says, Pshita de Chaluk, and isn't it obvious that they're arguing? Gemara says, not necessarily. Mao de Tema, what might you have said? My Lemafreya, what is it when it talks about the mikvah Lemafreya going back? Meyes Leis, maybe it's the same Meyes Leis. Kamash Malan, that's what we're teaching us here, that no, this Mishnah argues with the opinion of Rebbe Lazar. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Rabbi Yehuda Omer Begimel Prak and Vichula. Rabbi Yehuda said there are three times where the weather changes and you have to be concerned that wine turned to vinegar. Tana was taught, Bekidum Shal Matzai Chag Shel Tkuf. And when we talk about the easterly wind at the end of Sukkot, it has to be in the season of Tishrei. Rashi says, Shel Tkuf Im Kvar Nichnas Tkuf As Tishrei. That's if the season of Tishrei began, the equinox of Tishrei, so to speak. Aval Im Moshcha Tkuf As Tam Was Arkan Lo. But if you're still in the summer season, we would not apply this in, in that situation we would not say we have such a concern. And the Gemara continues, Tanya, we learned in a Abraiser, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Begimol prokim mochernes atzvua lefnei hazera, uveshas hazera, uveprosa ha pesach. There are three times that one can sell sell the crops, that's before the planting, at the time of the planting, and also beprosa ha pesach, meaning in the 15 days that are approaching pesach. Uveshlosha prokim mochernes ayayin, there are three times when one can sell wine, beprosa ha pesach, in the 15 days approaching pesach, uveprosa ha tzeres, in the 15 days approaching ashvu, of Ephros HaChag in the 15 days approaching Sukkot, the Shaman, and when it comes to oil, Me'atzeres Va'elach, from the time of Shavuos and onward. And the Gemara asks, Lamai Hilchasa, for what halacha, what are we talking about over here that at these times one can sell the grain, one can sell the wine, one can sell the oil, what do we mean? 
Amar Rava Rava says, Vitaim Repapa, and some say Repapa says, Lishutvin. What we mean to say is when we're dealing with partners. In terms of partners, one can sell without the permission of the other partner. Rashi explains, Lishutvin Sheino Echad Yachol Limchor Shalomidas Chavero. In general, one partner is not, al- not allowed to sell the produce, not allowed to sell the merchandise without the knowledge of his friend, of the other partner. Chutz Leprakim Halalu, except in these particular times, it is okay to sell without the knowledge of the other partner. Avol Beprakim Halalu Ein Sarach Limol. During these times, you don't have to ask the partner. Let's say, for example, he sells it, and then suddenly the prices go up. So really, it was a bad decision to sell. There's no claim against him, because these are times when the prices are high. It's a good time to sell. And so therefore, he doesn't have to get permission from the other, from the other partner when he makes these sales. And the Gemara continues, From this time and on, what is the halacha? Amar Rava Rava says, Kol yoma pirkehu. Every single day, as Rashi says, pirkehu zmano limchor. Each day is considered the time to sell. And what that means to say is that after the last of the three times has passed, so each day is a time when the partner could sell the produce without permission from the other partner. And the Gemara continues, the Pasuk in Yonah says, Vahikiz Ruach Hashemesh, it was when the sun rose, Vayamana Lukim Ruach Kodim Harishis, God brought an easterly wind that was Harishis. My Harishis, what is Harishis? Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says, Bishoshim and Hashemesh, Osa Tulamim Tulamim Vayam. It means it was a strong wind when it blew, it made these waves in the sea. They're darshaning from the word Choresh, like plowing. You make furrows in the earth, like waves. Amar Le Rabbah, so Rabbah said to him, Yachi, if so, Hainu Dechsiv. Is that going to explain the, the end of that Pasuk? The Pasuk says, Vasach Hashemesh al Rosh Yonah, by Yisalaf. It says, The sun beat down on Yonah, on the head of Yonah, and he fainted. It sounds like this wind has to do with heat. Elam, my rabbi, rather, rabbi says, Bishoshim and Hashemesh, when this easterly wind blows, Meshasek es kolaruchos mipone, quiets down all the other winds, and therefore those other winds would generally cool things off, and it got very hot when the easterly wind blew, so the other winds did not blow. And that's what the Pasuk means when it says, It says, Your clothing are hot when the south, when the, when the land, when the earth was quiet from the southerly wind. And we understand that to me. And Amr of Tachlifa Bar of Chista, Rav Tachlifa Bar of Chista said, Amr of Chista, that Rav Chista said, When did you get hot? When were your garments hot? At the time that there was no southerly wind, when the southerly wind was quiet, Because when the eastern wind blows, so it quiets down all the other winds, and that's why it gets hot. And the Gemara continues, Rav Huna Rav Chista have a Yasvi, Rav Huna and Rav Chista were sitting, Chalav Azal Geniva Alayu, and Geniva came upon them. Amar Chad Lechavre once said to his friend, Nekam Mekame, we should rise for him. Devar Urion, who, who he's the son of Torah. Amar Lei Idach, the other one said, Mekame Palga Nekam, should we really rise for this individual who's a Palga, he's a quarrelsome person. Adahachi Yasi Yul In the meantime, he came to them, Geniva came to them. Amar Lui said to them, Amaya Skisu, what are you dealing with? What are you talking about? Amru Lei Baruchos, they said to him, we're dealing with the the idea of wins. Amar Luhui said to them, Hachi Amar of Chanan Bar Rava, Amar Rav, so says Rav Chanan Bar Rava, that Rav says, Dalad Ruchos Menashvos Bechol Yom, the four winds blow each day, Veruach Tzvonis, Menashevis in Imkula, and the northerly wind blows together with them. Shel Mole Kain, because if not for that, Eino Olam Eskayim, the world would not be maintained, Afilu Shoachas, even for one moment. Veruach Deromis Kasha Mikulan, and the southerly, the southern wind, that's the most difficult of all of them. Vel Mole Ben Neitz Ma'amid, and if not for the fact that the angel Ben Neitz would, would stand and up against it, Machrevis, Kala Olam Kulo Mipanea, it would destroy the entire world. Rashi says, Ben Nates, Malach Ha'asri Kenates, it means the Malach that was like a hawk. Ma'amida Bechnafav uses its wings to stand against that wind, that wind. The entire world would be destroyed. Shenemar, like the Pasuk says, Hamibi Nascha Yaver Nates, is it from your wisdom that the hawk soars, Yifros Kenafav Laseim, when it spreads its wings to the south? The idea again is that it holds back the southern wind from destroying the world. And the Gemara continues, Rav and Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak have a Yasvi. Rav and Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak were sitting, have a Cholav Azal of Nachman Bar Yaakov. So Rav Nachman Bar Yaakov, he was passing by the Yosef Beguharko de Dahava, Uparasolea Sarbala de Karti. He was sitting in a golden carriage and it was spread over him a green cloak. Rava Azal Agave, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Lo Azal Agave. Rav went over to him. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak did not go over to him. Amar said, Dilma may inshi devei reish kalusa ninu. Maybe he's just a person that's coming from the house of the reish kalusa. Rav at sarich lo anolo tzrich nolu. Rav needs someone from the reish kalusa. Maybe he needs those connections. I don't need that. Kedachaz of Rav Nachman Bar Yaakov. When he saw that this was actually Rav Nachman Bar Yaakov, Azal Agave, he went to him. 
And the Gemara continues, Goli Ladare, he uncovered his arm, he rolled back his sleeve, that's referring to Rav Nachum or Yaakov. Amar, and he said, Shad Yonoshev, the Shad is blowing, that wind is blowing, and that's why it's hot. Rashi says, Gali Rav Nachum or Yaakov, Ladare, Shai Saruach, Mizrochis, Menasheves. The point was that the eastern wind was blowing, Vuhucham, low, and it was hot. Shad Yonoshev, Hashedom, Menasheves. And Tosis explains, Shad Yonoshev, Aruach, Mizrochis, Ko Amar. When he says Shad he's referring to the eastern wind, Kedemukach, Sugya, as it's clear in the Sugya. But not that the eastern wind, not that its name is Shadya. He referred to it as Shadya because it was posing a difficulty. Actually, the southern wind, the name of the southern wind is Shadya. Like it says in the Yorich, in the entry Istana. In that entry Istana in the Yorich, it says that the four winds have different names. Ruach Mizrach is Shosa, Ruach Marav is Urya, Ruach Tzafon is Istana, Ruach Durom is Shadya. In any case, the Gemara continues. Amar Rava, Rava, Rava says, "Hachi Amar Rav." This is what Rav says. Isha Mapelis Bo. The eastern wind is difficult. It causes women to miscarry. Ushmuel Amar and Shmuel says, "Afilu Marglis Shabayam Mar Keves Bo." Even the pearls in the sea are ruined by the eastern wind. Rav Yochanan Amar Rav Yochanan says, "Afilu Shichva Zera Shabimei Isha." Even the semen in the womb of a woman misareches bo. It spoils because of that wind. Amar of Nachman Bar Yitzchok, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchok says, "Ushloshan Mikra Echad Darshu." All three of these opinions are all darshaning the same pasuk. The pasuk says, "Ki hu beinachem yafri yavo kadim ruach Hashem mimidbar ola v'yevosh mekoro." Pasuk talks about the eastern wind, and it says, "Yevosh mekoro," it dries out the mekoro. What does that refer to? And so the Gemara explains, "Yevosh mekoro zu mekora shalisha." That refers to the mekora, the source of the woman. That refers to the miscarriage. The yechrav mayano. The pasuk also says, "Yecharav mayano zeshich vazera." That refers to the shich vazera shebemei isha in the womb of the woman. And the pasuk continues, "Hu yishsa otzer kol klechemda." What does that refer to? Zu margulis shabayam. That refers to the pearls in the sea. And the Gemara continues, "Amar Rava Rava says, Adi Surahu. This sage must be from Sura." The Daiki Kroy is very careful in interpretations of the Psukim. Rashi says, Adi Suro, Adover Hazem Ibn Surahu. This interpretation of the Pasuk comes from the people of Sura. The Daiki Kroy, they're careful in their interpretation of the Psukim. And the Gemara asks, My Kihu Bain Achim Yafri. What does the Pasuk mean when it says that it is Bain Achim Yafri? It is fruitful among the reeds. Amar Rava Rava says, Afilu even. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daflam in Bayes, Ahmed Aleph.